I had like I died hard Charlotte passed me and then I felt like I was actually like getting back into a good frame of mind of kind of like reframing it of like okay you're okay you've hit the like you're hitting the wall but you've got what is it at that point we had 12 miles to go and I was like okay like you can do this and I felt like I was building momentum back up and then the whole thing just locked Here we stand at the entryway to the legendary Harvard Temple Loop. Legends have been made on this loop. We're gonna go take a lap. Let me show you around. I'm gonna do my best David Attenborough here. So, what is it that makes the Harvard Temple Loop so special? Some say it is the blocking of the wind from the large prestigious buildings surrounding the I'm just gonna stop with the bridge. <laughs> Some say it's large prestigious buildings blocking the wind. Some say it's the smooth corners and ease of running around the loop. Some say that it's actually a perpetual downhill that never endingly leads straight into hell. Whatever it may be, it is notoriously fast. The location of many a PR and the preferred workout area for the runners of Boston. According to the experts at Strava and any self-respecting Boston runner. The loop is in fact 1,200 meters. On closer inspection though, we see it is definitely not 1,200 meters. But don't tell anyone that. By some quirk of the GPS, when you go around this very large stone edifice known as Soldier Stadium, it messes up the GPS signal coming and shoots your GPS wide. During the winters in Boston, when the entire city turns into a frozen hellscape, the Tempo Loop is often the only actual place to run that's clear that due to the groundskeeping of uh, Harvard University or Harvard College. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> and stayed an entire 18 miler around this loop. It's just as bad as it seems. Approaching a point of contention on the Tempo Loop. People argue whether you take the inside of this roundabout or the outside. GPS usually can't tell the difference. I always go to the outside. Many claim to have created the loop. Some say that John Harvard himself, at the founding of Harvard College, came out here and ran an absolutely nasty tempo. And thus was created the Harvard Temple Loop in the early 1600s? Yeah, 1600s. Oh my god, how are you? Oh, it's I so was good literally, to see we you. were waiting outside for people. I was like, this is too much of a shit show. We're not gonna. <laughs> I know, it's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> how are you, good. my friend? How are you? Good to see you. John, when did you get in last night? Uh, or, this, I or, in, or today? I got in at 10 a.m. this morning. Yeah. Or like 10 30, 11. How'd everyone race yesterday? Good, yeah, Em raced well. Um, she got second in the five. Ran It's just so much stimulation constantly. You're constantly being watched. You feel a little bit like you're in a fishbowl. Um, and there's just so much stuff you have to do on the front end that I think that's something that I've been dealing with this entire build of just how I mentally handle all of this. Because after each successive race, it's gotten more and more. Even like, yeah, even from just New York to now, it's kind of crazy. And just a lot more obligations, a lot more all the all the ancillary stuff that comes with this and in ways it's cool it's a it's a champagne problem to have but that doesn't make it any less hard ready on the count of three one two three hey guys i'm molly <laughs> former boston resident excited to be home
out in a sports bra and like, <laughs> basically underwear, like in the middle of the woods in like a snowstorm. <laughs> just like this. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, we're just... Don't worry. I feel like my life has become influencers in the wild, though. <laughs> This next stretch is going to be nuts. <laughs> what is it? A burrito. I know where from. What'd you get? They gave me a small cold brew. This is definitely not a small. We're just going to ask the people some questions, uh, what they know about Molly Seidel, what they don't know. Um, yeah, we're just going to dust off the journalism cobwebs here. So it's hailing at the moment, actually. Excuse me. Do you know who Molly Seidel is? Who? <laughs> Useless. No, no. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Do you know who Molly Seidel is? No idea who that is. No. Excuse me. No. Yes. Do you know who Molly Seidel is? No. She's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you know who Molly Seidel is? Yes, and you're her sister. What I was going to say, say she's right behind you. I she's would. Not. <laughs> so, okay. Who's going to win Boston? Who's going to win Boston? <laughs> I don't know. You? No, definitely not me. <laughs> Excuse me. Who's yes. going to win the Boston Marathon? I think Lakers were going to take it all the way. Excuse me. Yes. Who do you think would win in an arm wrestle, Des or Molly? Um, I don't know who was who. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, who is gonna win the Boston Marathon? Who's winning the Boston Marathon? Molly Seidel, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Failure. Going in like the morning of, I felt great. Let's go, Molly! And I felt very equipped on that day to really go for it. <laughs> And I tried something new in the race. I've never gone out hard at the beginning like that. I, I think mile five was like, I think we ran like a 505 on that. Okay. I was like, holy shit. I was like, I, look, I was looking here. So it was very outside of my comfort zone and I just wanted to stick with it. Just head down, go for it, and... I Hello? Yeah, did I blew up like I have never blown up before. <laughs> and I didn't get to finish Boston because of it. And so I think that's the toughest thing that I've been trying to like wrap my head around is just like I never imagined myself dropping out of Boston in like every scenario in my head. Never imagined this. I know it was like a problem a bit in the build up. Yeah, we we did dead. We call John right now. Izzy, call John. Who's that? It's Molly. It's Molly. Oh no. Is that is that Molly? Yeah. Here, I'll call John. Call John. Oh, I heard. Like. Uh, yeah. No, you're Boston. not gonna take a bus back. Okay, Newton Wellesley Hospital. No. John, she's at the Newton Wellesley Hospital. It's seven miles. From Mile here. fifteen. Mile fifteen. Wait there, Molly. You're, John and his parents will come and get you, okay? Uh, okay, she did. Where? You know what? 
yep. plan always just was go out with the lead pack. And that's kind of how I race. Like, I just want to get up in it. I want to be competitive because the marathon is such a grueling long race. It's hard for me to stay mentally engaged if I don't feel like I'm in it. And so that was kind of it is when the when Paris and um, Jocelyn and those women started to go, it wasn't even a decision factor. It was just, oh, you have to go with them. And that's how I want to race. But I guess that's part of it is if I want to continue racing like this, I have to be prepared for the consequences of racing like this, which is occasionally you're just not going to be able to hang with them and you're going to blow. So the big one is World Champs coming up. Um, that'll be July 18th in Eugene. It's the first World Champs on U.S. soil. So I'm really excited for that. Honestly, we um, we were kind of almost using Boston as like a building towards that. Um, just like get that strength in and then try and hone the speed a little bit for Worlds. But no, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be on the team with Sarah and Emma and just like it it's that similar feeling to how it was with the Olympics of like, you're just going, like, you're doing it for, like, this team aspect of it, kind of. And I think that really excites me. The fact that it's a championship-style race, too, that's, like, I love that kind of stuff. And looped course. Love me a looped course. Yeah, I think I'm excited, too, that it's, like, with majors sometimes, there's so much other stuff going on. It just is such a, like, big event. Sometimes with, like, worlds, it is almost just, like, smaller and more contained. And you focus on, like, what you need to do. So I'm... It, like I felt very much coming off of this one that it's like I'm dealing with a little bit like just that sadness that burnout a little bit but it's that knowing that there's something really big coming up and it's like that gets me excited again and that gets me that like feeling of like okay like I want to like get into this so give my quad some time to <laughs> recover <laughs> I don't know why I'm so sore after only doing like barely half of that marathon um but yeah, it's just give myself some time to like heal physically and emotionally and then just like get on it, so.